Welcome to Tech Notice. This over here is another variation of the best bang for buck pro Kratos PC of 2021. Now we made a different build of this PC that uses the same skeleton parts, but with PCs, if you change a few parts around, you can get a different performance from the PC. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how good is this PC in creative applications. So if you're a video editor, designer, or photographer, you're going to see how good this PC is in the Adobe Suite, Blender Benchmarks, DaVinci Resolve, and many more. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 OEM license, then look no further. BobKeys.com is a website where you can purchase all sorts of keys and licenses for very affordable prices. With a tech notice discount, you'll be able to get the Windows 10 Pro license 25% off. To purchase the license, click on the link in the description or search for Windows 10 license on BobKeys.com. Then add the product to the cart and press proceed checkout. Remember to add the 25 5% discount code and complete the order. Once you have the license key, click here, here, paste in the license and you're all done. Check out popkeys.com in the description below. I want to quickly mention that there are a few other videos about this PC. First of all, the build video if you want to build exactly the same system. Then there is a live Premiere Pro playback performance where we're going to be looking at different codecs so if you're a video editor that might be of interest to you and also there is a review about this pc out there as well where we're going to be looking at the features and the good and bad sides of this pc and how overall this performs and in this video we're going to be looking at all the performance and how good is it in creative applications but first of all let's go through the specs of this pc for CPU, we are running the Ryzen 9 5900X, which is a 12 core, 24 thread processor. For cooling this processor, we're using the Deepcool Castle RGB V2 IIO, and this is 360 millimeters. The motherboard is MSI MAG B550 Unify. Our GPU is from MSI as well, and that is the RTX 3070 Gaming Trio X. For RAM, we are running 64 gigabytes of HyperX Fury RGB memory that runs at 3200 megahertz and CL16. For storage, we're running a four drive configuration. The main OS drive and programs are on a one terabyte Western Digital SN850. Our project drive is also one terabyte in size and that is the Sabre Rocket 3.0 drive. Our media cache drive is a 240 gigabytes SATA SSD from Western Digital Green. And our archive drive is a one terabyte hard drive called Barracuda from Seagate. This PC is powered by the Corsair RM850 power supply. We're using the Fantix and Thu Evolve X case and this is the anthracite gray variation of color and finally we have added some rgb fans from deep cool as well all the parts that i've mentioned are linked in the description below if you're interested in getting any of them let's start with the benchmarks by the way the benchmarks are for free and if you want to test your pc compared to this one you can compare it and see how good of an upgrade this would be or how good is it compared to your pc first of all we're going to be looking at the cinebench r23 and this tests the rendering capabilities of the CPU, the single core and multi-core in particular. For single core, we're getting a score of 1592, which is a very high score actually, but not the highest score of the 5900X processors I've tested on this channel. And that is due to the silicon lottery, sometimes the RAM, because Ryzen processors like to use fast RAM, or even the motherboard. Sometimes the motherboard BIOS and how the motherboard uses the powers and runs the CPU can uh, actually affect the performance of the CPU but I wouldn't be too worried about it because we're talking about a few percent or sometimes even less than two percent which is just within the margin of error. In terms of the multi-score performance we're getting a score of 21,179. If you're wondering how does this compare to some of the other PCs we've tested on the channel, then you can see that on the screen now. I've also started to include another aspect of Cinebench R23 test, which is the 10 minute throttle test. How we're gonna do that is first of all, we're gonna be running the multi-core test and see how good is the score. Then we're gonna be running the 10 minute throttle test, which tests the computer's ability to withhold the clock speeds of the processor and then we're going to be comparing the 10 minute throttle test to the single you know multi-core test with it and then see how many percent lower is the 10 minute throttle test in terms of the results anything below two percent difference after the 10 minute throttle test 
we really can't measure the difference because that could be within the margin of error. So anything below two is a very, very good score. Anything above 2% difference, we can actually start to see a small margin of difference and we can measure the difference of different PC configurations. In our case, this PC with the 5900X scores 1.2% difference after a 10 minute throttle test, which is absolutely fantastic and nothing to worry about there. Now moving on to Geekbench 5, which is another CPU benchmark, but Geekbench 5 tests more like the general capabilities of the CPU and different aspects of the CPU, more like the, you know, everyday performance of the CPU rather than just rendering performance that we can see on Cinebench R23. In terms of the single core score, it is the highest score I have ever recorded in terms of PC. It's even faster than the 5950X, which is a 16 core processor that we used on the Black Creators build we did recently. But the M1 chip is still about 2% faster in terms of the single core speeds. And that is because the M1 uses a completely different architecture of a CPU. Now things get a little bit more interesting when we're comparing the multi-core speeds. Our Ryzen 5900X scores 14,150 points, which is only 0.5% slower than the Ryzen 3950X, which is a 16 core processor from the previous generation, which means that the leap between the generations is huge and the instructions per clock speed is massively improved in this 5900X compared to the previous generation processors. If you're interested in Geekbench 5 GPU benchmarks, then on the screen now you can see the Vulkan CUDA and OpenCL scores. Next up, we have Blender, and we're running every single Blender benchmark as always. And in terms of what Blender loves to see from the PC, that is a lot of cores. The more cores you have on a PC, usually the better Blender performance you have because every single core starts to render the scene out. And our 12 core 24 thread processor really shows its power here. As you can see, we're over 30% faster than the Intel 10900K, which has 10 cores and 20 threads. So only about 20% more cores, but 30% better performance, which is amazing. That is a huge improvement. Since Blender loves a lot of cores, we're not quite as fast as the 16 core variations of Ryzen 9, whether it's 39 50x or 5950x. Regardless, it's very impressive 12 core CPU performance. Now let's have a look at the SSD performance and this is where we're gonna see amazing, amazing results. This is what I would say is one of the like main features of this PC apart from everything else. It's like a nice cherry on the top. We're running a three SSDs and one hard drive um, storage configuration over here. One for OS, one for projects, one for cache and one for archive. Now, even though you see the different speeds on the screen, to put this in perspective, our OS drive is more than double the speed of an SSD in any of the M1 devices, which is ridiculously fast. And our one terabyte SSD costs less than a 256 gigabyte upgrade from the base model of M1 device, so M1 Mac Mini, 256 gigabytes. And if you want to upgrade to 512 gigabytes, then that is gonna cost you more than our one terabyte single SSD that we're running inside there. So we're getting four times the capacity and double the performance from the main OS drive. And even our project drive is faster than the M1 SSD, which is still super, super impressive. Now our cache and hard drives are a little bit slower, but they don't actually need to be fast and they're slower for a purpose. But as you can see, our SSD speeds are ridiculous and insane. Let's move on to the real world application benchmarks and speeds. Let's start with the Adobe Suite and Photoshop. In terms of Photoshop, this vitamin PC, that's what it's called by the way, is the fastest PC I've tested for Photoshop. So if Photoshop is a big part of your workflow, you're absolutely gonna love this PC because it's a killer 
in terms of Photoshop. Lightroom Classic, which is another photo editing program. But before we're gonna go into the benchmarks, I've got to explain that there is kind of two aspects of Lightroom Classic. You have the active scores and passive scores. Active scores are where you're actually working actively on a photo. So whether you are flicking between the photos and adding effects or LUTs on it and seeing them, you know, how fast does the program add all those effects on a single photo or you are on the development tab and you're literally just editing on your photos, moving all the sliders about or painting with a paintbrush, not paintbrush, but you know, with a brush on the photo. That is active scores and passive score is basically rendering score of this after you have edited the photos and you want to put those effects and, you know, basically blend them into your photos and then export them. In terms of Lightroom active tasks, the Lightroom Classic can make use of a lot of cores and it's more based on a single core performance. But regardless, it is a very high score. And the other PCs that we've tested on the channel are only better a few percent, which means that in the real world, you know, you really can't tell the difference. In terms of the passive scores, the 12 core CPU that's inside here really shines here and scores 151.7 which is very high and to put it in perspective my personal rig which is the 3950x 16 core uh, cpu it's higher than my personal rig it's very impressive scores now premiere pro benchmark and this is my favorite benchmark because this is the program that i am using the most in extended overall we score 917 and 923 when the precision boost overdrive is enabled i just want to make a quick note about the precision boost overdrive in this particular configuration and i don't think this is worth it in this pc because the 0.5 or 0.6 percent performance increase in real world applications is not worth the higher temperatures and the louder pc which is the cause of pbo enabled and we're running a lot more power through the cpu so standard overall we're scoring 951 extended export is 95.1 extended live playback is 96.6 if you want to know more about the hands-on live video you know playback speeds and how does the timeline work then i recommend you check out the premiere pro live performance of different codecs standard export score of 95.2 standard live playback of 106.7 effect score 83 0.5 and GPU score of 89.8. It's not the fastest PC we've tested for Premiere Pro in this channel, but regardless, it is very impressive and right on the top of the leaderboard. Now, Adobe After Effects. This is what this PC loves to do. I'm getting extremely high scores in Puget Bench for After Effects. As you can see, our overall score is 1,490. Our GPU score, 127.3. RAM preview score of 125.6. Render score of 120.8. And tracking score of 200.8. Point six. Now that is faster than our Threadripper build and any other PC we have done on this channel. So if After Effects is something you're after, a very good performance, this is a very impressive PC for After Effects. Now DaVinci Resolve. So if you are a video editor in DaVinci Resolve, you know that there is the free version and studio version and you might be using either of them and because of that, we did the test on both of these applications or both of the versions of the application so you know what is the difference if you're using a free version or paid version. I also tested it with the Precision Boost Overdrive on to see if there is any difference and the 1.2% increase in performance I personally think is still not worth the actual loudness of the PC and the higher temperatures so I would leave the PBO off. The rest of the scores I am very happy with as well, especially the 4K scores and Fusion scores. If you plan to do below 8K and maybe some mild 8K editing on this PC, it will be fantastic for it and a very smooth experience. If you plan to edit 6K plus or your workflow is deep into 6K plus um, resolution of video codecs and that is what you're editing with or working with on DaVinci Resolve, then I think you're going to start to run into some problems with this PC configuration 
because of the graphics card. Now, the Rinty Resolve loves to use the VRAM of the GPU, and if you use 6K Plus or 8K workflow on DaVinci Resolve, then it's highly recommended you go with some of the GPUs that have 10 plus gigabytes VRAM on your GPU. In our case, we only have eight. So anything below 6K, I think you should be fine with. In conclusion, this is a fantastic PC for video and photo editing. So if you're one of those creators who, you know, needs to do everything, I, you know, I can relate to that and you do a bit of everything and it dips into different workflows and maybe you can't like kind of nail down and really make a PC for your awesome workflow for a certain program and you need to do everything, then you're gonna love this PC because it does everything very, very well. For photo editing, this PC has no problems and the same for video editing as long as you stay below 8K video editing. Now in Premiere Pro, even if you do light 8K video editing, you're gonna be fine, but in DaVinci Resolve, you might need a little bit of a different GPU if you plan to do any 8K video editing. Altogether, it's a killer machine and it looks so nice. I didn't know that gray and green can go together so well and it looks absolutely fantastic. So I highly recommend it, so big thumbs up from me. If you want to know what is the latest pricing for this PC, then you have to check out the links in the description and see individual pricing of the components because the prices right now change quite a lot. So if you're interested in getting one of those, check out the links below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.